Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled. My name is Shaggy, and today I'm doing a full solo playthrough of 51st State Ultimate Edition. We're gonna be playing against the new Borgo Automa that's in the Ultimate Edition box. I randomly selected the University to be our faction for this play. And I went ahead and I shuffled in the Winter Expansion in with the base cards. The game recommends for your first game to just play with the base cards, but my recommendation is just throw in either the Winter or the New Era deck. Those really don't add that much complexity. You want to place your scoring marker along with Borgo's scoring marker on the zero and the time token on round one. We get to start the game as first player. And as always, we get to draw six cards and pick four of them to keep. Definitely like the look of this school. And we'll keep that. Let's keep those four and we'll discard these two. And there we go, now we're ready to begin. Don't worry if you don't know how to play 51st State, I'm gonna teach the game as I play, just as I always do. So let's just jump right in. We start each round with the lookout phase, where we draw a number of cards equal to the number of players plus one. And because we're first, we'll get to draft one of these. I think I like this methane storage. Now Borgo's gonna select one of these at random and immediately build it. Now you could just shuffle up the cards if you want. I prefer to just use a die. So number two, he's gonna take this and he's just gonna build it. I'm just gonna have his area up there. And the other one gets discarded. Now Borgo doesn't really care about what cards he's getting. They're really there just for us to attack if we want. He'll also score one point for each card that he builds at the end of the game. And now we're going to do a second round of that. But this time, Borgo gets to go first. It's like a snake draft. Okay, he's going to take the first one. And I find it's nice to arrange his cards the same way that we're going to with production buildings on top, your features, and then your action cards below. Hmm, this mobile storage looks cool. Let's grab that. Now we get to do our production phase. Borgo is gonna get a number of brawlers equal to whatever the round number is. So since we're in the first round, he's gonna get one brawler. And we're gonna get the production here that's on our board. In this case, we get three workers. One gray contact token and two extra cards. And now we get to go to the meat of the game, the action phase, where we're just gonna alternate taking actions back and forth until we both pass. There's a whole host of different actions that I could take. They're all very simple. I can use some of these actions that are on my board, or if I had action cards out, I could use those. I can build a card from my hand. I could raise a card from my hand. I can make deals with cards from my hand. You're gonna get to see all of that as we go throughout the game. But right now, the first action I'd like to take is to grab one of these connection cards. You can see there we got the junk train and we got the punks. And as an action, I can spend two of my workers to grab one of those. And I think I wanna take that junk train. Now this goes into my hand and later as an action, I can play it in order to get three of the blue contact tokens. And those are gonna help me make deals, which are gonna really help us as we go forward in the game. So there you go, that was my first action. You do not replace that until the end of the round. And now we have Borgo's turn. You're gonna to want to just flip the top card of the deck. And the only thing we're paying attention to are the symbols here that are on the left-hand side. And really we're looking for these three symbols, the gun symbol, the brick symbol, or the gear symbol. If one of those symbols was there, then he would do something special. Anytime one of those three symbols is not there, as is the case right here, he's just gonna do his standard action. 
So he's going to look over here at these connection cards, and if one of them is available, he's going to discard it, and in this case there is, so he's just going to discard that card and gain two points. And that's it. Now if there weren't a card available, he would instead discard one of his brawlers and gain one point. Then this card just gets discarded. Keep in mind, if he ever needs to take an action that requires him to discard one of his brawlers and he doesn't have one, then he's going to immediately pass. And that's exactly what we want to see. So hopefully he'll get to use that brawler up and he'll get out of our hair here a little bit. Well, I think we got this junk train. Let's just go ahead and play it now for those three contact tokens. You're going to see what those are useful for here in just a second. And there we go. That's my turn. These turns are going to be super quick. Ooh, okay. Unfortunately, we got a gear symbol. So when Borgo draws a gear symbol, the first thing he's going to do is try to use one of our open production buildings. There's two different types of production buildings, open and closed. We don't have any production buildings at the moment, so he can't do that. If we had one, he would use it, he would gain a brawler, and then we would also gain a worker. That's really bad, so we're going to try to avoid building any open production buildings if we can. The second thing he's going to do is do his expansion action. And that's going to be different depending on which expansion you're using that you've thrown into the deck. Now, as I said in the beginning, we just threw in the winter deck. And as it says right here, he's going to add a brawler to his state. And this is the difficult thing about the winter deck. Every time he draws one of those symbols, he's going to keep adding more workers, which is going to extend his turn, which is going to mean he's going to get victory points faster and faster. And so the one thing we can do to alleviate that is by passing ourselves, because if we pass, he'll immediately pass as well. So we want to try to be quick. Okay, now what are we going to do? Well, I tell you what, right off the bat, I want to play this school. Now we use gray contact tokens in order to build things. And we need to pay a number of them equal to the distance of the card. In this case, it's one, so we just need to pay one gray contact token. Now, when you build a production building, you're going to immediately get whatever it produces. In this case, it's a worker. And this school has a building bonus, which means right when we build it, we get that just one time. And that's just another worker. Every round, as long as this school survives, we're going to be able to get that production of one additional worker each round. Okay, there we go. That was our turn. We don't have either of those three symbols, so he's just going to do his standard action. The connection cards are gone, so instead, spend a brawler, get a point. I think for my turn, I want to make a deal using this fuel tank. Now, to make a deal, we use blue contact tokens. Again, we look at the distance, so this is a one, so we need to spend one blue contact token to make a deal with this card. What you do is you flip it over to its deal side there, tuck it in our little area, and we're going to immediately get whatever that produces, in this case, a fuel tank. And in future rounds, we're going to get those as production. So it's another sort of slightly different way of getting production. The downside to doing deals is that they aren't worth points at the end of the game, unlike our buildings, which are each going to be worth one point. Okay, there we go. Nice. No symbol, so brawler, point, super simple. And I think we want to keep the deals going here. We have two of those contact tokens. Let's go ahead and make a deal using this mobile storage. This actually has a distance of two, so we're going to have to spend both of our blues. But we're going to get one of these wild goods tokens. 
we can convert that into any of the goods whenever we want. So that's going to be powerful to have each round. Okay, perfect. He wants to try to do his standard action, which would require spending a brawler. He doesn't have one, so he's going to immediately pass. And that's going to be the end of round one for Borgo. We can now just keep taking actions as much as we want until we're ready to pass. The only downside of him passing is that we can't attack his cards anymore once he's passed. But we weren't planning on attacking his cards anyway, so this is a great thing. Now right now we're out of contact tokens, which is not exactly a great place to be. So we're going to want to use our little actions here that are on our board. We basically have four different actions. We can spend a gear in order to get two gray contact tokens. We can spend two guns to get a universal contact token and a shield that we can use to protect our cards. We can spend a gasoline in order to get two blue contact tokens. And each of those we can only do once per round. The fourth thing we can do, and we can do this as much as we want per round, is to spend two workers in order to gain either one resource of our choice or to draw a card. Let's go ahead and spend our gas here, and you just place the token there to show that you've done this action, because you can only do it once. Get two blue contact tokens, which means we can do some more deal making. Let's use this construction site to make a deal. Distance two. We're going to tuck and get a brick. Nope, I've changed my mind. Instead, we're going to do this hideout. Same two distance. But instead of a brick, we're going to get a victory point. That's what that purple star means. And so that's good. We'll generate a victory point every round. That could be very useful. And I want to turn this wild resource into a gear. Put the gear right there and get two gray contact tokens using our action. That's going to let us build. And I want to build this shipwreck. It's an action card, so we'll just put it in our action row here. And this is going to let us spend one worker and one gear in order to gain two points. And I think that sounds like something that we'd like to try to do. So we're going to spend two workers down here, which we can convert into any resource. Let's get a gear. And then let's do this action. Worker, gear, two points. And just like the actions on your board, actions on your card can only be used once unless it specifies otherwise. Well, there we go. I think we are out of contact tokens, out of workers, out of resources. I think we're going to pass. And it's good that we used all that stuff because you can only carry your cards from round to round. Unless you have a card that lets you store things. So any leftover workers or resources that we hadn't spent would just get wasted. As it shows right here, you don't have to discard your cards between rounds. And in fact, you can hold as many cards as you want in your hand. There's no limit at all. At the end of the round, we do a cleanup phase. We pass the first player marker over to Borgo. We remove all of the stuff from our board and our cards. We flip over new connection cards. And we advance the round marker by one. And there we go. We jump right into round two with the lookout phase. This time Borgo is going to be first. Rolls a one. It's an action card. So we have a choice between the parking lot and the excavator. I'm very hesitant to do open production. Now we could do a deal with it and get a brick, which would be nice, but I think I like this parking lot. That's a closed production, so Borgo couldn't hop on that. And that's what we want to see. And with the snake draft, we get to go. 
Wow. Spin one worker, two guns, and two brick to score four victory points. We don't really produce those things, unfortunately. Although we do have a wild production right there. I do like the distance one. I'm going to take it. Maybe we can make use of that. Six. And that's a production building. Okay. Now the production phase. We're in round two. So Borgo gets two brawlers. We're going to get a bunch of stuff here. We have three workers, one gray, two cards. The school is giving us an extra worker. We get a point, a wild, and a gas. There we go. That's all of our production. Pretty good. Now we're ready for the action phase. Borg goes first. He's going to do the standard action. Now we have two of these available. They're going to take one at random. Four. So taking the punks. And getting two points. Hate to see that. Makes me want to just take those merchants just to keep them from getting it and getting those two points. Yeah, seems like a good idea. So we're going to spend two workers. Boom. All right. None of those symbols. Going to spend a brawler. Get a point. This is going well. If they could run out of brawlers and just pass right away, that would be fantastic. Is this a wise thing to do? I think so. We always run the risk of Borgo attacking our cards and destroying them. And so let's jump on this shipwreck before he has a chance to do that. So we're going to spend our wild as a gear. And we're going to spend worker gear... Two points. Okay, again, neither of those symbols. Ooh, if they could just do that one more time, that would be great. And in fact, let's just go ahead and play our merchants, get those two blue contact tokens, and let's hope that they pass. Oh, there we go. Nothing. Needs to do the standard action. That would require spending a brawler that they don't have. They are done. We are getting really lucky. The danger is that they draw that gear over and over again and keep getting brawlers, which just extends their round, keeping them scoring point after point after point. We won't have to worry about that now. So that is really lucky for us. Now, we haven't really looked at our cards too much here. We have this arena that would give us some production of a gun for each gun symbol in our state, which we don't really have any. But having a couple guns would help. Eh, it's not really what we're going for. We have this wrecked tank again. We could try to make deals and just get points that way. That would be useful. Oh yeah. We do have this hold, which is interesting. What are we going to do? Okay. I think let's start off. Let's play that to get two more. So we have a lot of blue contact tokens. We can make a lot of deals. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a deal with this construction site. So distance two, two blue tokens. It's going to give us a brick. And now, instead of building this parking lot, I am going to upgrade the shipwreck into the parking lot. By doing this, we can ignore the distance and we can just spend one brick. And as long as there is a matching icon, I can replace the card that's here with this one. So we have that matching icon. We can just discard this and we can play the parking lot. Just as if we had built it. 
And in fact, when you develop a building, you actually get a point. And now we have this parking lot, which is a production building. It's going to give us one gear for every one of those gear symbols in our state. And we get to count the card itself. So we have one, so we'll immediately get one gear. That's going to be nice because it's going to allow us to play this gear here to get two gray contact tokens so we can do some building. Now, I think what I'm going to do, don't hold me to this. I want to make another deal. Yeah, okay. We're going to make a deal with that wreck tank. Distance two. Another victory point. Then let's go ahead and build this arena for two. That's going to give us a gun for every one of these symbols. And unfortunately, we just have one. We can also build this hold. That costs one. And if we can make this happen, then we'll be able to gain four victory points. And that seems really good. We're not going to be able to do it this round, but maybe next. And that's basically all that we can do right now. So we are wasting a little bit. We're wasting this gun and this worker. That's unfortunate. We're gonna become first player. Clear everything off. Move on to the third round. Now I think I've somehow failed to mention how the game actually ends. Once one of us reaches 25 points, that will signal the last round of the game. We'll finish up the round, and then we will get a point for every building that we've built, and whoever has the most points wins. We get to go first, and I think I'm gonna go with the church. That will just give us some easy victory points. Okay, then Borgo gets to go. Ooh, it's an open production. There's another one here. That's pretty nice. Yeah, we'll take that. It's the third round, so they're gonna get three brawlers. Okay, we're getting our three plus one workers. Gray, two cards. We're also getting one gear. And one gun. As well as a gas can. A wild. A brick and two points. We're looking good, but we've gotten pretty lucky so far. And I imagine that's about to change. Probably this round. As always, I'm always interested in those connection cards. And that thugs, we do have a gun. That would be three red tokens. And we haven't really talked about those red contact tokens yet. Those let us discard a card for its spoils result. And we discard a card from our hand. And we have a couple of cards here that would give us some pretty nice spoils. So I think... For our first action, we are going to just take those thugs, spend the two workers. And as we expected, they're going to take those, and we're all tied up. Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and play the thugs. We have to spend a gun. But we get three red contact tokens, which is fantastic. We're going to make good use of those. Ooh, okay, here we go. That's the gear. Luckily, we have no open production, so it's just going to get another brawler. And that was what we were afraid of. First thing I want to do is to use this card here. We're not going to build it. We're not going to make a deal. We're going to get the spoils. And that's what we use our red contact tokens for. So again, you look at the distance. It's a distance two. Spend two of those. And we're going to get 
two wilds, and a worker. And then this card just gets discarded. So that's a way to get some nice immediate gains, but you get nothing in the future from that. Now keep in mind, we could also use red contact tokens in order to attack the cards of our opponent. And when we do that, we look at these numbers here. Production cards have a defense of three, which means you ignore the distance. You just have to spend three red contact tokens in order to raise or destroy that card. So we had three, so we could have attacked one of their production buildings if we wanted. The feature buildings take four red and the actions take five. In this case, I just wanted to get the spoils from one of the cards in our hand. Okay, and that was our turn. All right, there we go. Brawler, point. Next thing I want to do, I want to raise that building and get the spoils. Distance one, one red token, and we get two grays in return. Wonderful. All right, once again. I don't mind that. That's the sort of the best possible outcome for us, I think. What do we want to do here? I think I want to build this. Yeah, we're just going to straight up build that one. It's another production building. We can get either a brick or a gas can. Let's get a brick. <laughs> okay, we're... Getting lucky again. We don't mind him spending his brawlers that way. That's okay. And now let's do this hold because we've been in danger of him attacking this this whole time. Let's go ahead and take advantage of it. We have one worker. We don't have any weapons, so we're going to have to use two of the wilds and two brick. And we can get four points. That was costly but I think worth it. All right, here we go. So that's one of those special buildings. That's the brick. This one is super simple. He just takes the top card and builds it. It's effectively a point at the end of the game. And you can see here, we've only built five and they've built seven. So they're gonna get two extra points once we trigger the end of the game. So we're gonna wanna make sure that we kind of close that gap a little bit. And one of the ways we can do that is let's immediately build this church. It's gonna cost two, but we get a building bonus of two points. Ah, there we go. So once again, we don't have an open production, but it's a gear. So he gets another brawler, and this is the problem with the winter deck. He can just keep getting brawlers and brawlers and just never pass. We got lucky those first two rounds, I think. Ah, <sighs> man, I don't really like the cards that are in my hand at the moment. Yeah, this is a problem. Let's go ahead and just get two contact tokens, two gray ones. All right. Let's go ahead and use this. To get two blue. Ah, gonna build again. Just getting points, it's not good. Why don't we spend, you know what? Actually, before we, ah, I do wanna protect this card. Okay, yeah, we're gonna spend this. It's gonna take two. Built it, production, we get two shields. And we can place those immediately onto cards that we wanna protect. And we definitely wanna protect that one. And I'm not sure what other one we really want to protect. Let's just go ahead and protect this parking lot. No. 
this arena. Okay. Another point. I'm actually going to spend these two workers here to get a card. Because I don't like that card. Ah, open production. Not really what we wanted, but we can make a deal with that. So that could be worse. Come on, pass. Yes. So we got really lucky there. They got the gun symbol, which means they would have attacked one of our cards. But in order to do so, they have to discard a brawler. They don't have a brawler, so they're going to pass immediately. Just to go over what would have happened, we would draw another card from the deck, and that would define which card they were attacking. It would get raised unless it had one of these shields on it. If it has a shield on it, we just remove the shield and the card is saved. If it doesn't have a shield, it gets flipped. As a, as a sort of consolation prize, we get whatever is on the deal part of the card. We just sort of get that, and then Borgo would get two points. But we narrowly avoided that, so they've passed. We've definitely gotten pretty lucky, that is for sure. And honestly, we have these two deals. I say, let's just go ahead and deal it up. But that'll at least be resources that maybe we can make use of later. We definitely have way too much production. <laughs> we need more scoring cards. And we wasted that wild. I don't really think there's anything we can do with that. So we're going to pass. This marker gets moved. We discard even the shields. Everything gets discarded. Now, keep in mind, if Borgo were to put shields up, which can happen depending on which expansion you're using, they get to maintain their shields. They don't, uh, they don't remove them at the end of the round, but we do. And we go right on to round four. I've definitely made some big mistakes not getting enough scoring cards out because we really want to end the game in the fourth round, if we can. Well, I think we like this 8 mile. This is a good scoring card for us. So, yeah, we're going to take that one. Yeah, this is a tricky one. Any of these cards we probably want to get the spoils. Now, do we want the worker spoils? We probably do, rather than the gun. Yeah, I think we want these worker spoils. Okay. And it's gonna take this one. Oh, now they have so many more cards than if they have 10. We only have seven, so that's a problem. They're getting four brawlers, because it's round four. And we are getting so much stuff. <laughs> we want a brick. And we're getting two shields. Yeah, let's go ahead and throw those on. Actually, let's hold on. I think we can hold on to the shield. I don't think we have to place it immediately. But I definitely want to place it on that one. We're getting two points. Two brick. Got two brick, two gas cans, and a wild. Okay, Whew, we got a lot of stuff here. Looks like they're building. Ugh, this is not looking good. We gotta finish this off quick. Now, we definitely want to play this eight mile, and we can do this twice. So it's, it's just a set of these for three points. And we don't have another gear. We also want to get some spoils and stuff. So I think we should take the punks. Yeah. We're gonna take the punks. what we're gonna do okay 
Oh no. Never mind, sorry. It's just gonna take that and get two points. So we don't need to do that right now. This is protected, so we don't have to do this immediately. We need to get another gun and another brick. We don't have the best cards here for that. We might not be able to do this. Oh, uh, we're in a little bit of a pinch here. Yeah, if we had, okay, we have two guns and two brick. Yeah, that would be seven points, okay. And we use a person, and we use a person here. Okay, I think we can make this work. We're gonna use these punks. Oh, they're gonna build again. We need to end this. We're gonna get these spoils. Three workers. I think this is gonna work. All right. That's just a point, we're tied. Okay, now we're gonna spend two workers to gain a resource. That one. Oh, building again. <laughs> Oh no, this is not great. Now we're gonna use this action to get two grays. All right. That's a point. Now we're gonna build. Cost two. And we're gonna put our shield on there. At any time, as a free action, you can place a uh, shield that you might have onto a building. Perfect. So now we're ready for some scoring there. All right. Okay, we're now gonna take this action, one worker, gas brick, and gear for three points. Okay. Another point. We're now gonna do this action. Person, two guns, Two brick for four points. And there we go. We've triggered the end of the game, uh, which might not be a good idea, but we've done it. Yes. Would have to spend a brawler, and so is going to pass. Beautiful. Okay. Now we can relax and take in our situation here. They've currently built 13 cards to our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they're gonna get five more points than we are at the end of the game. One, two, three, four, five. And that's gonna put them ahead of us. So we need to get two more points. Now we could do that by building two cards, but we only have one token here. However, if I build this old cinema, boom. That's gonna give us a point as a building bonus. So let's go ahead and do that. And for good measure, we can spin this gas to get two deal tokens. And then we can make a deal with this card. And get another point. And there we go. We pass, we've ended the game. We can immediately go to final scoring where all we do is get a point for every building. So we have nine buildings. Like we said, they have 13. 10, 11, 12, 13. And there we go, we've won by two points. And there you go, that is a complete solo playthrough of 51st State using the Borgo Automa. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.